got to go faster, Roger. Left that taxi and then to the wrong Hi guys, welcome to this special episode. I'm at Barton Airfield and we're getting a rare access tour behind the scenes at Barton. We're going to see some cool things that people don't normally get to see here, so come with me. Thanks so much. No problems, buddy. Have a good day. All the best with it. Well, um, huge thanks to those guys. <laughs> um, hopefully, I'll see you again sometime. Take it easy, mate. Pleasure meeting you. Alright, see you again. See you later. I never thought I'd be starting the video this way, but welcome to a behind the scenes tour of Barton Airfield. So um, this is Chris, and hey guys. we've seen him in a previous video before um, <laughs> when me and Rory did my 500 subscribers special. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. But um, ever since then, Chris has become a duty manager at Barton. So we're really lucky to get kind of a rare access tour here at Barton. So thanks a lot for doing this. Yeah, absolutely, thanks for coming. First of all, I'd like to say a huge thanks for 1,000 subscribers. It means a lot when you like and subscribe so I can keep making more videos like this. Get in touch in the comments or on the Macropilot Facebook page to give feedback and let me know what could be done better and any suggestions for future videos. This 1,000 sub special is a two part series behind the scenes at Barton City Airport and Heliport. In the first episode we look at the fire and operations crew, the Heliport and the Northwest Air Ambulance. Next episode will be a tour of the airfield and a look inside the control tower. So we've got two types of fuel here at City Airport. We've got Avgas 100 LL, which the majority of the light aviation aircraft that are based here take. And we also offer Jet A1 fuel, which the majority of the helicopters that we get into City Airport take. Do you offer no gas? Uh, so from time to time we do have UL91, uh, which is the equivalent of no gas, but unfortunately it's unavailable at the moment. We offer a self-service fuel service here at City Airport. So essentially it's the same as your forecourt when you're filling your car up, you put your card in, uh, and then that allows you to put as much petrol in as you'd like. Uh, the fire crew will fuel aircraft in what's called a hot refuel situation, so if helicopters want to come in and get away quickly, uh, they can leave their rotors running and then our, it's our fire crew's job to then refuel that aircraft. But clearly, like, if you cannot do a hot refuel then, Absolutely. then shut, that's shut preferable. Down, yeah. Shut down refuels are preferable, uh, although some aircraft need to get away quite quickly, as I'm sure you can imagine with the air ambulance for instance, if they're on a category alpha flight, yeah. it's imperative that they get back up in the air, saving lives as quick as they can. The fire and rescue crew at Barton are responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of the airfield and provide a category 1 with the capability of also providing category 2 fire and rescue cover for any aviation incidents on or around the airfield. Yep. <laughs> right. Oops. Uh, Get the radio off. So if someone's life depends on you right now. Yeah. I'm <laughs> going a bit faster than this. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Now get our boots, the zips on. Oh, okay. The zips on. Pretty fast. Fast in. Get the flash hood. Yeah. All done. <laughs> they just told me I was like... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the Barton uh, Fire and Rescue Garage, and these are two vehicles. This is the lead vehicle, this 
is a backup vehicle. This is a lead because it carries more than this one. <laughs> nice. You've got two sides. The driver's side, which is obviously the driver's side, and you've got branch's side. The okay. branch operates the rear side. So, the rear side is the branch, so you can branch over from this side, the rest of this side. The driver's side will then operate the pump. Okay. So once the pump is going, the driver will then revert to the second immediate, either one of the wheel, either tighter or fall. Which then you can use in conjunction with whatever you're doing, so you might have a dual media. <laughs> yeah, dual media, so you can have what essentially is a cone of water. Okay. So you can approach the target, you can cone them in water, which will then bring the flame sort of control, and your dual media is then you get your powder, I mean your powder in, and push. So you carry this, which is CFR bag, so inside there is a bit more advanced. I'm going to ask you about that, because I know about CFR. Yep. I mean, are you all you guys trained in? We are trained to a certain standard, yeah. I mean, they, they do come in. Um, two of the guys, two? Yeah, yeah two guys which are um, we're trained to CFR standards as such. I presume you've only got the heli-made guys like well, two minutes away, you know, yeah, so. Yeah. What's the first thing you hear? So is it the crash alarm that yeah, goes off? Yeah, big thing about that red thing. Okay. Loud, flashes lights. <laughs> standard thing then is we acknowledge that call. Yeah. Which will be any form of acknowledging you know, wherever you are. And then stop what you do, get up. Once you're in the vehicle, you ask for more information and such. And if it's within the airfield, then you'll ask for any permission, you know, crossing runways, entry taxiways. Okay. But well, usually, we'll get either all traffic will be held on the airfield and we'll get clear issues to either direct transit, which is the quickest route. But okay. Most of the time, most of the ones I've had have been off airfield. So okay. we usually head straight at the crash gates on the main entrance and transit that way. So we also carry numerous different charts. This is essentially an overhead view of the map of the uh, field, so yeah. all the crash gates levelled all the way around to six. We usually use either crash gate one, and we have actually used crash gate six and crash gate five before, but they actually the took us through into the housing estate. But the other one is these here, which uh, we have conjunction with Katie Fire. So these map references as such, we can, you know, say- Oh, so that's what the fire brigade have yeah, as well? Yeah, we use the same as these guys. So, you know, yeah, we're here. Most of the ones I've had have been down here or that way. So either, either side of the runway, mainly either side of the main runways. <laughs> but this this here essentially is a giant extinguisher. Okay. Powered by a CO2 cylinder, it's essentially a giant powder. So 50 kilograms of powder, some Onyx system, some more advanced ABC. Okay. So, you know, some general, general fuel fires, you know. Do you know how long your media will last in this? Like, if you just... If we're up in a seven bar, which yeah. is usual, we can weight bar. Seven bar is about a minute and a half. Yeah. Well, well, well we've, got all, we've got all the stuff, you've, also, you've got all your extinguishers on it. Yeah. yeah. You've got all your extinguishers, but if, if that runs yeah. out and it's still going, then you use all your extinguishers. You just have, use everything on it. You just can. do what you can. Just do what you can, yeah. Up, yeah. I mean, the primary thing is get them out. You, you can save yeah. the plane, save it, don't risk yourself. Yeah. It's obvious things, but. Just try and get out. If you, if you can't get out, you've already fallen five again anyway, aren't you? That's already. Yeah, they'll, they'll, do, do the tower do that whilst you guys yeah. are out? Yeah. 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 Just as we finish looking around the fire vehicles, an AS350 lands on the pad for some fuel. So myself and the fire crew go out to refuel it, and then I got an offer I just what couldn't refuse. Hey look, I've got sunglasses on! <laughs> um, so this is yeah. a very weird okay. turn of fate. Hey, um, sorry, Rich? Rich, yeah. Rich and Ben have just offered to set me up for a circuit in the AS350. Absolutely incredible. I've never flown in one of these before, so this will be incredible. Again, thanks so much for that. Um, no problem. Well, brilliant.
honestly. Thanks so much. No problems, buddy. Have a good day. All the best with it. Well, um, huge thanks to those guys. <laughs> um, hopefully, I'll see you again sometime. Take so, it easy, mate. Pleasure All meeting you. Cheers. All right, see you again. See you later. So a huge thanks to Rich and Ben for taking me on a quick flight and remaining on the topic of helicopters, me and Chris head over to tour the heliport and the Northwest Air Ambulance Base. Let's go! <laughs> so right now we're just going to escort some contractors over to the other side of the airfield. Like we mentioned before, we've got two sites here at City Airport. We've got the main airport and we've also got the heliport. Do you have a special permit to drive airside or is it just because you work here sort of thing? Uh, no, so we, even though I work here, it isn't like a God-given right to be able to drive airside, so we have to uh, pass a course uh, which involves how to work the radios, what to do in certain situations in order to uh, drive on the, on the airport side of the boundary canal. Traffic problems at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> You're in touch with the tower via your um, um, work radios. Absolutely, yeah, so the yeah. radio here. And you have to ask permission, just like pilots do, to manoeuvre anywhere airside. Absolutely, so uh, there are two main areas. Uh, so we have free range on the apron, right up until the manoeuvring area. So any taxiways or runways, we need to get permission to enter those particular areas. Okay. So here we are at City Heliport, just the other side over from City Airport. As you can see, we have a variety of base helicopters over at this side, ranging from the Air Ambulance, Northwest Air Ambulance, which has two base helicopters, the police and the air support unit, and various other helicopters that are in the hangar just behind me, flying school aircraft and privately owned aircraft. On the site here, we have three full-sized helipads, which can cater for helicopters as big as an S-92. Uh, you've got Jet A1 fuel behind us uh, so that we can get aircraft in on hot refuels even if they need to get uh, away again nice and quickly. You can base your helicopter here monthly or even if you just need it overnight uh, whilst you're visiting Manchester. So looking around the heliport we were then lucky enough to have a tour around the Northwest Air Ambulance base. Cool. <laughs> is this like a little education room? Yeah, so think? this is, um, we get a lot of requests from um, supporters of the charity to come in and have a look at what we do. Mm. So um, this room's, um, we've probably had this two, three months now. So it's our contact point for, for people coming in that have supported the charity. So it might be people that we've helped and then have decided to go on and raise raise funds. Mm. Um, so it's good that we can come in here and meet them yeah. uh, and we can you know show them a little bit about what we do. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh. Okay. So we moved into here, when was it, Rob? Uh, we've had this, what, for about nine, ten months now. Yeah. And it's great. So we've got a purpose-built training room now. Um, so we do a lot of simulation training in here. Um, that's why you can see the mannequins around the room. So it's important that when we're not we're not we're not tasks. A lot of our down, downtime on base is spent um, doing simulation training or moulage, as we refer to it. And it just makes sure that we you know we we practice, 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 and then when when we're actually at scene and we, we need to be um, using that skill for real. Like course, hopefully yeah. we've got it we've got it off drilled and. Um, or to fine fine art, haven't we? Absolutely. Um, yeah. But it's, we were in the porter cabin prior to this, so it's really useful now to have this space that's purpose built and yeah. have all the equipment on hand ready for us to use. So we've two response vehicles now based at Barton. Okay. Um, so this oh wow. 
So this yes. means that um, if for any reason the aircraft can't fly due to weather or um, a technical fault with the aircraft, it, if, it means we can jump on this and still Fantastic. provide coverage to the region. And um, th will that be things like when weather's too poor to fly and that sort exactly, of thing? Exactly, yeah, yeah. If the weather's bad for the day, then we're, we're still operational on this. For example, would you guys use this if, if there was an incident at Barton as well? Yeah, so, so any, any incident that's within a few miles from here yeah. um, that's easily accessible by road, then we w would consider this as an option rather than flying. And this is fully kitted? It's fully kitted, like. it's carrying all the same equipment that we've got on the aircraft. Okay. Um, yeah. We're great here, aren't we? We're handy for the motorway, so we're straight down on the M16. We can, yeah. you know, into the city centre, uh, and good, good coverage with Manchester as well. Yeah. So city centre is it, we, we always consider this as an option. Now the pilots are brilliant at finding somewhere to land. Yeah. Um, however, this is always in in our mind as as a possibility because Manchester's so built up. Um, whereas we we could jump on this and hit the city centre in what ten twelve minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is our, what we call our make ready room, so when a job comes in from ambulance control they ring our, our phone and give us just the briefest of details, so um, the location of the incident and the nature of it, um, and then that means that the pilot knows which direction he needs to fly in, what weather might affect him going that, in that direction, and he can go out and start up the aircraft whilst the paramedics uh, can plot the route on our iPads, which basically have these maps overlaid on them. Um, and we can start looking at what hazards we might encounter en route and how long it's going to take and that sort of thing. For the benefit of the car, like we were saying, jobs within Manchester, we know this is us, but we know some of these key junctions um, and the, sort of the, the ballpark time that it'll take us to get to those junctions. So uh, this is Helimed 75. This is uh, crewed today by myself and Simon. And um, yeah, it's one of three um, helicopters that we have in our fleet. Um, they're all EC-135 helicopters and um, yeah, it's, it's just part of uh, the, the setup we've got, completely uh, charity funded and um, it's an ideal little aircraft for the purposes we need which is um, getting it into small uh, landing sites and uh, carrying the equipment that we need to get to sea. So we, we operate with uh, a pilot sitting front right seat, um, one of us as a HEMS trained paramedic sitting in the front left and the other HEMS paramedic uh, sitting rear facing in the back of the aircraft. Paramedic in the front will assist the pilot with navigation um, and the paramedic in the back is doing all the comms with ambulance control, finding out about the jobs we're going to and uh, just trying to find a bit more information so we can plan ahead. Um, when we then arrive at a scene, we're a team, we both go to the patient uh, and we'll treat the patient and work alongside uh, our colleagues in the ambulance service okay. uh, and mountain rescue services and there's a lot of collaborative working with, with other charities, with other agencies. You guys typically get the most serious, really? We, we do and um, you know, primarily it's about getting the team to the patient yeah. and, and making those, those interventions at scene that can uh, hopefully help save somebody's life so we, we bring some of the skills that you would commonly find in the emergency department in the hospital uh, and with, with the training and the equipment and, and the um, the skilled staff that we've got on the on the air ambulance we're able to bring that to the to the scene um, and that's what really can make a difference isn't it Rob? On our, on our other aircraft we, we crew it with a HEMS paramedic and a um, consultant doctor um, Having that doctor on board, they, they joined us what, 18 months ago, coming up to two years ago, um, as part of enhancing the pre-hospital care we can provide, and with them has come a whole um, enhanced skill set. Um, so they're doing surgical procedures, um, giving anaesthetics, and the most recent um, project being blood on board. So we've had uh, we started carrying blood uh, to give to patients in the last, it's been since January, has it? So the last few months um, and that's been given a good few times already yeah uh, we have a good partnership with another charity blood bikers they provide us um, with our blood as well and um, yeah it's, it's a life-saving intervention um, as we said although we work um, closely alongside the ambulance service the the actual operation here is charity funded 
um, and in order to make that happen there's a whole uh, host of people that are often working behind the scenes um, that make that happen from, from fundraisers to event managers, uh, retail, um, shops throughout the region and this all goes on often behind the scenes um, but, it, but it's those people that really um, keep, keep our operation ticking over, keep the funds coming in and then that goes back to the, the members of the public as well who uh, you know, running events, running marathons, putting, putting their money in a tin, um, that's what keeps us flying, that's what keeps us uh, able to actually respond to incidents and uh, yeah that's, that's why we can do what we can do because of the public. And it's not cheap operating out helicopters. It's not at all. Well. It's not a cheap industry. But obviously, you wouldn't be doing it w unless it wasn't as quick and effective as it is. If there wasn't the benefit that, that we see from it, then yeah, it wouldn't be worth doing it. But it, it yeah. absolutely is. So, huge thanks to Rob and Simon for letting us have a little insight into the amazing work they do with the Northwest Air Ambulance Charity. It's more than worth checking out their website and seeing how you may help fund the vital life saving work they do. Also, a big thanks to Rich and Ben for taking me flying and to Chris and the crew at Barton for letting me film. That's it for this episode, but stick around for part two of this series where we have a tour of the facilities and services at Barton and have a look at what goes on inside the control tower. Like and subscribe, leave a comment to let me know what you think, and until next time, keep air between you and the ground.